Wholesale Hotline, where we cover everything to do with wholesale real estate. I'm Jamil Damji. I'm Brent Daniels. And I am Pace Morby. And together we cover the most important parts of wholesale real estate. Lead generation. Conversion of sellers into contracts. And dispositions. Guys, remember when you're watching this show, do us a favor and squad up in the comments. Make sure that you are liking and subscribing to the YouTube channels and in the Facebook group, Wholesale Hotline. Most important, we wanna know we're doing a great job for you and helping you build your business, so go give us a review on iTunes and or Spotify. So squad up and enjoy the show! Welcome to Wholesale Hotline number 213. And before, Pace, if you don't mind uh, me giving the announcement before everybody reads it on social media tomorrow, but uh, Pace and I just finalized that I just purchased Sub 2 from Pace Morby. Isn't that incredible? Wow. <laughs> you no, obviously that's April Fool's. Oh, uh, I'm like, what? I'm like, but, we struck uh, a deal. <laughs> I don't know if I anybody uh, was convinced, but uh, I doubt it. But uh, some of the some of the in studio audience was a little bit a uh, little bit shocked, yeah, so to speak. But uh, no, Pace, how are you, brother? I'm so good, bro. So good to see you. So grateful for you and and our friendship and all the years I get to learn from you and the future years I get to learn from you as well. And can't wait for today's episode. I'm excited about it. You as well, brother. I got a comment here. I mean, I got a uh, a quote. It's been a while since I've I've pulled one out, and this is self made in America. I love Bro, that guy is styling, love, dog. Love, love. Look at yeah. that. He's got well, the jacket owned... over his shoulder. Look at that, dude. I mean, this is the look. I think we're going back to this look. This is the look here. All right. Um, thinking and feeling do not produce action. Action produces thinking and feeling. Thunder is good. Thunder is impressive, but it is the lightning that gets the job done. And that is, I mean, sums up today's episode of Wholesale Hotline. We're going to be talking about five ways to get a deal uh, today, to get a deal as soon as possible. We've got Jerry Norton. He is rushing back home. Uh, he's in his van. I think we can add him here. My Man, my mouse is, play, is my mouse is playing games on with me, so I can't collect select him today. What's up, Jerry? Where are you, are you driving to Montana right now? Yeah, we're a little behind schedule. Coming coming to Missoula, but we're gonna be pulling over in a minute. So sorry, guys. Oh, you're fine, brother. Is uh, the boss driving or what? Yeah, she's driving. There we go. She's the best. <laughs> she's gonna drive anyway, so might as well let her drive. Um, we're going to be talking about uh, locking up deals today. It looks like Jay in the comments said, I locked up a deal today. We should give that man some love. There we go. Bing, bing, bing. Love that. Um, you know, I would love to talk about this for a second. I think that so many people are not aware of modern technology and what's going on in the, like, the internet. I could go buy a deal right now in like five different places. Yeah. Okay. Like already contracted, ready to go buttoned up and I could go fix and flip a house today. I know this is wholesale hotline. I get that. Jerry, do you ever fix and flip? Brent, do you ever fix and flip? Sure. All the time. What about you, Brent? Do you fix and flip? Yeah, not my favorite thing, if I'm going to be honest. Mine uh, either. But if, yeah. it's, if it's a if it's an easy flip, if it's a newer property or it's a, it's a property that uh, doesn't need more than, say, 40, 50K, um, we'll, we'll do something along those lines. But okay. Um, if it, if it needs significant, I'll leave that to the pros for sure. Okay, cool. So my point to this is I've made a lot of money in my life. I've never made more money on a deal. The most amount of money I've ever made on a deal is when I've held a property for over five years and I've sold that property. I've rolled that money into another deal. That's the most amount of money I've ever made in my, my, my life. The second amount of money I've made in my life is off fixing and flipping. I always get my biggest checks off fixing and flipping. Thirdly, I get, you know, significant size checks. I'm not Brent Daniels with my average assignment fee at nearly 30 grand. My average assignment fee was around 18 to 20 grand when I was like full steam wholesaling. 
But I always looked at it when people are like, I can't find a deal. I go, you know, there's companies like Keegly.com. Like I can go to Keegly.com right now and I can pull down one of their markets and I can look at all their properties that are already locked up, ready to go. And I can call Keegly and negotiate those prices to buy myself a fix and flip or a burr house today. I can also do that on Investor Lift. I know Jerry sells a lot of his deals on Investor Lift as well. I could go buy a deal today on investorlift.com. I could fix and flip. I could do a burr deal. You could buy sub two and seller finance deals on there. And I also look at other companies. Um, I won't name this company because Jamil doesn't like them, but there's other big companies out there that do this. Also, there's people in the side comments right now that are like, I have deals. See, Tony says, how do you spell that? Let me spell this for you because it is amazing to me. I just did a webinar the other day. I had like 4,000 people on it. And I said, do you guys want to see how fast you can find a deal right now? Like you guys think you have to cold call, you have to text, you have to do all these things. If you guys are willing to fix and flip and partner with somebody, you could get into a real estate transaction today, today, like right now. And the web webinar I was doing, literally nobody had ever heard of Investor Lift. It was a, a newer audience, new bunch of people. Investor Lift, go to investorlift.com. You can buy a deal today. You could go to keygly.com, key, like key of a door, glee as in happiness, K-E-Y-G-L-E-E.com. And I look at this and people go, I've been trying to get into the business for a couple of years and I just can't find a deal. Guys, if you are struggling in wholesale, if you are struggling in real estate, you are struggling in finding a buy and hold, stop doing anything other than going to go to Brent Daniels. Brent Daniels guy, Jeremy, da J Jeremy on his team is the dispo guy. You could buy a deal today from Brent Daniels today. Jerry, I don't know if he any, has any active deals. He probably already sold them all on sure. investment lift. <laughs> but yeah. guys, there are deals right here, right now. See, Janina Farr says, I'm looking for three flips now. Let me tell you something I want to point out to all of the, the audience. My wife in 2020, 2021, made about a quarter million dollars being a bird dog for me. What does that mean? My wife went to Keegley.com literally for every deal that she found for me. I was also wholesaling as one of my primary incomes, but that was an operation that is humming and churning and making money without her, without me. I'm not involved in it anymore. And it still operates and does all the things. But my wife is like, I want to make some extra money and I want to list the properties that I find you. If I find you a deal that you could fix and flip, will you pay me 20% of the fix and flip net? I go, absolutely. So what she did is she would go to Keegley.com. She would work with um, a couple of different people over there. And she would say, my husband wants this deal or my buyer. She'd say, my buyer wants this deal, but I need it $10,000 lower than you currently listed it for or you have it listed for. Sometimes she would get the deal. Sometimes she wouldn't. The ones that she would get, I would buy them. My team would fix and flip them. So not only did she make 20% of our net profits, but she also was the listing agent when we went to list the property. This is how she became a top 1% agent in the state. Actually, not even top 1%. It was like 0.001%. She was like top five agents in the entire state because she was just listing properties that she found for me on keyglee.com. My wife says, I'm your bird too. Yes, you are my bird. Bird is a um, European slang for my baby, my girl, my woman, right? So I look at that and I'm like, guys, you guys could just bird dog for fix and flippers right now off of Brent's list, off of Investor Lift, off of Keegley.com. Are there any other websites right now that you guys can think of that I could go and find a deal in bird dog for a fix and flipper with already contracted, already locked up houses I could go find today, Jerry or Brent? I mean, every market has active wholesalers that are transacting day in and day out. If you're just active in your market, you'll find who those active wholesalers are for sure. I mean, there's, right. there's deals all around. Mind? Yeah, I think, you know, there's, um, I'm sure you could probably find some deals in bigger on bigger pockets. I'm sure you could find some deals on the MLS that are listed by wholesalers that have the right to list it on the MLS. 
Um, but I mean, whether it's locked up or not, I mean, you could certainly, I mean, Jerry, Jerry's made a whole career of buying properties off of the MLS. And, and so, um, the inventory is there. It just depends on if you're going to be brave enough to reach out and, and make an offer on those properties. Okay. So let's talk, let's talk about this for a second. How do I find wholesalers? If I don't, if I hate Mark Zuckerberg, believe it or not, I get people that DM me. And they say, Pace, I want to join your Facebook group, but I hate Facebook. I feel like they're spying on me. They are. Okay. Just so you know, everybody's spying on you. They, they want to sell you advertising, all the things. How do I get a deal if I can't get into your Facebook group or Wholesale Hotline Facebook group? How do I get, I get one? And I go, go to Google mm -hmm. and type in cash buyer. What are you going to find? Are you going to find cash buyers? No. You are going to find wholesalers who are actively marketing in your market that have active deals on their website, or you can just call them and say, hey, my name is Pace. I'm looking for deals for my fix and flipper. Notice that you're a wholesaler in the marketplace. Do you have anything on your market, on, on your, your plate? That is the easiest way to find active wholesalers in your market. If you Google it right now, Google it, Cash Buyer Atlanta. None of those Websites are cash buyers. They are all wholesalers marketing themselves as cash buyers. And the people yeah, even better sell my sell my house cash Atlanta. Right. Oh, yeah. sell yeah. my house cash Atlanta. Sell my yeah. house cash, cash. Also, guys, Google hard money lenders in your area, right? Hard money lenders have inventory that they can move. I was really shocked with that. You know, the first time I met Chris Iman, I had no idea he did hard money. I just thought that he was buying houses and 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 uh, and wholesaling houses and doing all that stuff. I mean, he's a hard money lender. All of them uh, down down the down the line. I mean, you talk about all of the guys that we all know here locally that that do hard money. They have inventory all the time. All the time they have people bringing them deals. So don't sleep on Googling hard money lenders, building that relationship to actually get the deals themselves as well, especially if you want to take them down and, and do a fix and flip or do a buy and hold. You know, my wife, maybe she should do an episode with us in the next couple of weeks and we should have her come on board and go through a process of what she goes through on InvestorLift and Keegly.com to, to say, this is a deal, this is not a deal and have her lock one up live on Wholesale Hotline and have me fix and flip the property and show you guys that is one of the greatest play ways to make money in wholesaling another existing deal. A lot of people forget about this. You can wholesale another wholesale deal. The easiest way to do that is find one cash buyer that you work for and go, I'm going to find you a, one deal a month. That's my only job. I'm not going to go build a big buyer's list. I'm not going to have 50,000 people on my buyer's list. I'm not going to worry about a big disposition company. I'm going to worry about having one buyer in the beginning. And I'm going to go and find contracts that are already contracted. And instead of going and saying, I'm going to cold call, I'm going to spend all the money, which is also very lucrative and, and the way that everybody ends up going, in order to get your first deal, if you're one of those people, okay, that is sitting there saying, I have not gotten a deal in two years. Why do I think this? And why am I like hell bent on this idea? I have a gentleman named Ricky. He emails me, I'm not exaggerating, once a month for probably the last three years. He confessed to me today because he's sending me deals. He's sending me stuff. He's sending me stuff all the time. And he confesses to me he's never done a deal before. And I reply back and I'm like, Ricky, how is that possible that you've never done a deal? You seem pretty active. And what it is is he's got 50 or 60 people that he's sending all these random things to. He's not identified one buyer and one type of project that he's looking for for that one buyer. He's all over the place. And so I know everybody is sitting there going, oh, I got a cold call, I got a text, which you should at some point. But if you are one of those people that's been stuck for two years, I think we should have my wife come on and go, Ken Grin says, Pace, is that a daisy chain? No. Kind of, it is kind of, but no, my wife is finding a deal and I do this with other people. I, I did it with a, a girl here in Mesa, Arizona. She was actually a TTP student and she came to me and she's like, Hey, would you be okay if I just brought deals to you and you bought them and I got 30% of the profits on your fix and flip and I didn't take an assignment fee up front? I go, yeah, I'm down with that. 
I, I have no risk on the front end. I don't have to come up with money for your assignment fee and I'll show you how, to, how we fix and flip. I probably did 15 deals with her before I realized that none of them were her deals. She probably made a couple hundred thousand bucks, okay? So I look at that and I go, guys, if you have still not done a wholesale deal, find an active fix and flipper and yep. say, can I find you a deal? Tell me exactly what you want and go through all the active wholesalers, go through keekly.com, go through investorlift.com, go to Great Western. Is it Great Western? Sure. We'll call it that. Okay. Whatever they're called. I don't remember <laughs> what they're called. Go to these companies. They they're have called a lot of problems typically. They do cause a lot of problems. That's why yeah. I didn't bring them up. But the other companies don't. Okay. And so new, you can get Western. a deal today. Today. You can get a freaking deal today. Oh, yeah. We got, I got corrected in the side chat. So before we move on to the other four ways, that was my first thought today. Looking at if you are still struggling in the market, trying to get your first deal, why not just go to one solid buyer and say, let me find you a deal in the next 30 days? Do you guys have any problem with that, Brent or Jamil or anything? Or, I'm sorry, Brent and and, and uh, Jared, do you have anything to add to that? I think uh, when I hear that pace, when someone says I can't find a deal, which is very common, it's I almost want to, I think there's some like clarification, like, are you looking for a deal or are you looking to transact? Are you looking for a deal? Are you really looking for a deal or are you looking to make money in real estate? And let's get clear, because I think that's your point pace is like, well, what, what is it you're actually looking for? Are you looking for a property you can fix and flip? Are you looking for a property that you can keep as a rental? Uh, what's your capital situation? Are you looking to just transact and make some money as your bridge into real estate? Are you looking to wholesale at a high level where you do it over and over again and, and create an operating company that wholesales? Like, what is it exactly you're looking for? And get really clear on that. And that changes obviously with time because you might start out one way and then move into other things. But I think a lot of people get so hung up on like they have to find this deal when really what they're saying is I want to learn how to make money and transact deals so that I can start to do things with my life. Maybe quit a job, maybe do this full time, maybe build a portfolio, maybe start flipping. But like I think there's just a real lack of clarity. A lot of people don't don't really know how to really hone in what they're looking for. Well, I didn't, I, you know, you read rich dad, poor dad, and it's, I, I got to buy rentals, right? That's the, yeah. you, that's passive cash flow. You, you mm -hmm. get the, 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 you replace your income with that and then you're out of the rat race. Right. And so it's like, okay, well, as a young budding entrepreneur, how do you do that? Do you just stay in your job and, and cherry pick deals here and there? Do you go out and learn all the creative strategies to buy it with nothing or low amount down? Do you find a mentor? Do you find, uh, you know, these yeah. deals that you can try to, you know, sell to other people and flip these deals, but you're not really sure what that means? I mean, I think we've done a really good job over the last 10 years of really explaining what you know, how to wholesale property and how to, how to get your toe in the water and how to build a resume of success showing that you can find opportunities. And that's usually how we get started. You know, you find somebody that's buying a house and you say, Hey, is this a good deal? And then all of a sudden they're like, Hey, let's put something together. But it, you know, it all starts. And this is something that Pace has said, I think since day one, I think your very first YouTube video Pace is like, if you don't have friends, you will not make money. <laughs> I mean, I think that that I mean, if you put if you put the core of your message of, of of a lot of what you say is is get a bunch of friends that are doing this business and you're you're going to be you're going to do awesome. You're going to do all right. You know what I mean? Because it's really tough to fail if you're surrounded by people that are doing this and doing it on on a little level or a big level. And so, um, yeah, I mean, the, the other thing I would say is if you. When you're finding somebody that's an actual buyer, somebody that's going to close on it and do the project and 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 flip it and 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 make their income and that's how that's their business, uh, they're going to be typically more conservative than some of the guys that that are just doing one or two deals uh, a year. So I mean, if you're going after one of these bigger type flippers, their their numbers are going to be more conservative, but it's going to go really, really, really smooth. So there's some trade off there. Yeah, yeah I, I remember. Oh, go ahead, Pace. Go ahead, Jerry. I was just going to say, I remember uh, th that idea around reverse wholesaling where you find your buyer and then you, you go find them deals. 
I'll never forget when I was really active in Metro Detroit, flipping a lot of properties, this, this one closing I went to, and this was when I would go to closings and I'm sitting at the closing. I'm the, I'm the cash buyer going to flip this property and sellers there, wholesalers there. And, uh, I look down and it's my first time looking at the, the HUD statement, right? I'm looking at the HUD statement and I see assignment fee, $80,000. And I turn and I turn and I look at the wholesaler and we make eye contact. And his eyes are bugged out and my eyes are bugged out. And he's like freaked out. And I, and I say to him, I said, I put my arm on his shoulder and I say, man, good for you, dude. Good for you. Yes. How do we do? I said to him, how do we do this again? How do we do this 10 times this year? Mm-hmm. Yes. Right. And that was, and I meant it. And that was my attitude. And what I was saying to him was, I'm happy. I'm sitting here. I like this deal that I'm about to buy. I'm excited about what I'm going to do, where I'm going to go fix this up and flip it. And the fact that you made whatever you make, I don't care what it is. The fact that you make $80,000 in this example, I'm thrilled for you because you bought deep and you brought a deal that fit my buy box, my criteria. And I want to do more transactions. I'm in the business of transacting and doing these deals. I'm I'm basically outsourcing uh, acquisitions to you because you did all the work to find this great deal. How do we do this again? And I think, a lot of wholesalers, they miss that. They miss that message. Now, not all cash buyers are, are cool like that, but but a lot are. And if you can align yourself with a couple of people doing that, transacting like that, and they want you to win, and they want you to win big, and they don't care what you make as long as the deal fits their buy box, dude, you're you're in business pretty quick if you're willing to hustle. Yeah, I, I think that this is one of the my favorite topics to talk about is that I think wholesalers forget what people do with the property once it's wholesale, nor do they even know in the first place. So I, you know, I came from the construction background. I know Jerry, you're blue collar boy like me. You come, you come from understanding, you know, the fix and flip world really, really heavy. So I knew what my customer was doing with the house. I knew what they were doing. So it was easy for me when I found out, oh yeah, oh my gosh, wholesaling's a thing. What, what the, f- this is amazing. And then I realized that none of the fix and flippers really like 95% of the fix and flippers do not find their own deals. Like people are bringing them to them. And when I realized that I was like, Oh, I got to be in wholesale, baby. This is insane. Oh my gosh. But I always knew what the hell the customer was doing with the property. They were fixing and flipping it. They were buying and holding it, or they were developing, you know, something completely different. And I always knew that they were my customer. So I always went to them and I would say in my first couple of years, my first year, my business, I left a lot of money on the table. Why? Because I just went to Jamil and I said, Jamil, sell all my deals. I left a lot of money on the table and I'm so glad I did. Why? Because I focused on deal, deal finding. I went out and I found and negotiated and structured deals. And that was the, the merit badge that I really acquired my first year. My second year, I went out, you know how big my buyers list was in year two? Five people, five people, people I would go play golf with, people I would hang out with, we'd go on double dates with. One of my buyers is one of my best friends to this day, Jeff Dumas. I also hugged one of my my favorite buyers yesterday at an Easter party, Doug Hopkins. These people become your freaking friends. And if you don't know what they're doing with your houses, you're not going to understand the whole gamut of real estate. And so what I love about what Jerry's saying is become friends with your buyers. They want you to be successful. And what I would do is when I would sell a property to, to one of my buyers, one of my five buyers, we would stop by once a month, once every couple of months, check in on the property. They will share crews with you. They will share lenders with you. They'll tell you the right title companies. And what I see a lot of wholesalers do that are brand new is they build a buyer's list. And look, I'm not opposed to this. I know that this is what a lot of people profess. I would rather have five solid buyers that are my friends than a massive buyer's list of 50,000. I have no idea. I don't know who they are. I have no real relationship with them. For me, I prefer to do what Jerry just talked about. I want to work directly with my cash buyer, especially in my first year. I become friends with them. Am I leaving some money on the table? Yes. But I'm getting deals done and I understand the whole entire uh, gamut of the business. So, Again, going back to the first way to get a deal today, the first way to get a deal today, and we'll have my wife on. She's, she's in the the side chat today. We'll have my wife on. 
She says, she professes she can find me a deal in less than an hour live. We'll have, you, or we'll have her show you how to verify, how to do the deal, how to do all the things, and she'll do it live. And there's a lot of different ways to make money on that first deal. You could assign it, right? That would be daisy chaining. Or what my wife did is she actually partnered with me on the deal and she would take 20 to 25% of the net proceeds of my fix and flip. So she would stay involved in the deal and also get the listing at the end. So there's a lot of different ways to structure it, but there's no reason, okay? There is no reason you cannot get a deal today if you go around and do that method. There are houses that are already contracted, ready for you to buy. Yeah, you might have to beat up Keegley a little bit. Their prices might be 10 grand too high, 20 grand too high. You can beat them up on that price. It's not the gospel truth. It's not etched in the, the 10 commandments. Okay, it's not on the tablets. You can negotiate that price. Same thing with investor lift. You can negotiate that price. You can make comment. You can do things and offer certain dollar amounts. There's properties right now, ready, contracted, negotiated. Somebody followed up 4,200 times with that seller to get the contract. You can skip the line, skip the sales portion, skip the cold calling, skip the, do, skip the skip tracing for heaven's sakes and go straight to a contract and get tied into a deal today. So that's, if I, if I had to get a deal today using any strategy, that's the first thing that I would do. Brent and Brent and um, yeah. Jerry, what other ways would you go get a deal today? I would go on uh, LinkedIn. This is going to sound a little crazy. I'm going to go, I'm going to create a profile on LinkedIn and then I'm going to go search in LinkedIn, real estate investor Phoenix. Okay. Mm. And I'm going to find five or 10 uh, of the people that have posted to LinkedIn that they're real estate investors. It just, for some reason, these are like the best buyers that I've found. And I would find exactly what they're looking for. And then I would just join every single wholesaler's blast out. I would do exactly what Jerry was talking about. You Google, sell my house fast, wholesale real estate, whatever it is. And I'm looking through and I'm like, send me everything that you have. Please send it to me in my email. How do I make sure that I can see what you have? I've got some buyers that are looking. And then boom, you've got the buyers. You've got the, the inventory. You match them up. That's the quickest way to make small deals. It's going to be typically smaller deals, right? Because, um, you know, the wholesalers already, already spending some money there and, and, uh, I mean, already making some money there. So there's going to be a little bit that you can make on top, or maybe you negotiate it a little bit like the, the old Randy Guzman style, right? Uh, pace where you're just, you've got a bunch of buyers, you, you add it, you, can I get it a couple grand off of what you have it at, you know, hook me up, buddy. And then, um, and then sell it to them and uh, assign it to yourself and then assign it to somebody else. That, that, that'll that be like if you want it now, today, done now. Uh, if you want to build a longer, bigger business, you got to find the roughest looking properties in your marketplace. You got to find the properties that need the most love. I would find the thousand ugliest houses possible within a certain geographical area, and I would be obsessed with them absolutely obsessed with speaking with the property owners and seeing what their timeline is to sell. It might not be for years. It might not be for, it might be today, but that's what I would do. I'd find those thousand ugliest properties and, uh, and I would have a, a meaningful and quality and respectful conversation with the property owner and see if they would consider an offer on their property. And then from there, you're, you're off to the races. And that's exactly what I did to build my business. One, I went on LinkedIn. Guess who I found on LinkedIn? His name's Josiah Grimes. Okay. I found I was Josiah in a five hour Grimes. meeting with that guy today. Called, I cold called Josiah Grimes who is uh, key, uh, Jamil's business partner and Pace's business partner and a lot of things, a brilliant mind. But at the time he was a wholesaler. He was this, he was this wild, young, goofy wholesaler that was just running around. He had the silliest laugh I've ever heard. And I was like, right. He, and to this day he does. Um, and he was just, uh, yeah, I'm looking for deals. And I sent him a deal and he texted me back 45 minutes. Hey, I sold it and I made 12,000. I was like, oh my gosh, this guy's like the real deal. He sold it to Jamil, by the way, who sold it to somebody else for like 30 grand more. You know what I mean? But I was new to it. And that 12,000 meant a lot. 
You know what I mean? It was, it meant a lot. It meant that, that I could do this over and over and I didn't have to rely on just one person that said that wasn't getting back to me in time or whatever. And I will say this just before Jerry lets loose and, and really takes it over the top, but I will say this. I think that there's two, two segments of buyers and this is what we're really discovering with the guys that buy a lot they're buying 10 to 12 to 15 to 20 homes a month they have a cookie cutter process to it and so they're going to stay within that 50 to seventy thousand dollar range of fix up they're not going to do huge fire damage properties they're probably not going to buy mobile homes they're probably not going to buy your vacant lots but they will buy those properties that they can go in they can put the cabinets and the countertops and the flooring in one of five different variations that they have and they're going to sell it and they're going to be really great and it's going to be good the other side is the people that want the ugliest properties in the roughest areas they want it. They want those properties and they're going to go in and they're going to, they're, they're going to fix it up themselves. They're going to keep their margin super low on the, does I this mean, include buyers keep, that are like willing to buy houses with dead heads inside the freezers and stuff like that? Yeah. Well, you know, those are the craziest buyers. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, you gotta be an absolute psychopath to buy those houses, but, uh, I'm just kidding. Jerry, Jerry can tell that story some other time, but, um, yeah, I think there's two, there's two, there's two buckets of buyers. The ones that, that can get in, do the easy, kind of turn and burn and keep their crews going and then the ones that want the bigger projects with the bigger rewards but it's a bigger risk for them so uh, i think it's really good to have a combination of both uh, at least five and five to start out five that are just doing a ton of business and five that kind of do a few but they're bigger projects and um and you'll do very well what do you think jerry yeah i mean i like to look at it from the perspective of uh okay do you have time but no money because if you have time but no money that's going to limit you to some very specific marketing channels if you've got money you still need time but if you've got maybe more money than time or you've got access to some resources with money um there's some things you can do where you skip right to the front of the line i mean you can do these paper lead services like lead zolo and speed the lead and they will you literally will pay them a thousand dollars and they will put a warm seller in your lap and you just yep. literally talk to the seller All right but that's expensive so Typically what we're talking about here, I think, is like the low cost, zero cost, low cost strategies. And um, and so I think in the beginning, that's really critical because most people that get into the business, I was this way. I think Brent and Jamil and Pace were this way. It was the time, no money. Like I got some time in my second job from, you know, after work till midnight, but I don't have a lot of money. So now I got to be resourceful. I got to be creative and I got to hustle. And so... Um, well, what are my options there versus like, okay, now I'm looking at things and I'm like, well, I don't really care if it doesn't cost me money. In fact, I'd rather pay a lot more money to get in front of a lot better leads and a lot faster with a lot less work. So everything's developmental. I, I like to tell people where are you at in your, in, in your, the phases and stages of your development with your business and then plug into the appropriate thing. So I guess going back to like the zero, one of my favorite strategies that I did in the very beginning, this still works today is I go on sites like Craigslist, you can do this on Facebook, and I'm looking for uh, homes for rent. And what I'm doing is I'm calling that, and I don't want to talk to property management, what I'm looking for is an owner operator. So typically you'll see the sign in the yard for rent, there's a phone number there, you call that number, and real quick, you know if you're talking to a property management service and it's the receptionist, or if it's, you know, Jim Jones and that's his, you know, eighth rental property. And so I'll say to them, I'll say, hey, I'm calling about this home for rent. I just drove by it or I just saw it or I saw it on this website or Craigslist or whatever. And the, and the reason why you're calling that person right now is because the pain is very high. It's vacant, which means they just went through an eviction, which means th their level of uh, tired landlord could be very high right now because it's not producing income. And so at that point, I'll say, look, I'm not calling about renting the property. I'm actually calling because I'm an investor and I'm wondering if you're interested in selling this property for cash. And a lot of times they'll say, yeah, no, I just spent some money fixing it back up. We're looking to rent it. And then I'll say, do you have another property that you might be looking to sell? And I swear, I don't know what percentage, but a lot of times they'll say, yeah, I've got this other property that's a dog. It's been a loser for me. I'd love to sell that property. Here's the address. What's your price? Um, and so it's a very quick way to, it's kind of the, uh, what do you call it? The undercover. You're like an undercover tenant. Right? You're not really a tenant, you're, you're calling. And if you get property management or an answering service or receptionist, I'll, I'll say to the receptionist, hey, 
I'm calling about such and such property for rent. Who do I need to talk to? So I'm trying to get to some kind of decision maker, the owner or somebody that would, I could then have a conversation with. And, and again, then I'm going to say, hey, uh, I'm not actually calling about renting the property. I'm wondering if you want to sell it. And then this, again, this open the door. got his first deal. Yeah. Jamil got his first deal walking in a neighborhood. He saw a four rent sign. Mm -hmm. He asked the lady, well, it seems like it's past the first of the month. Like nobody's rented the property. It was like the 15th of the month. So he already knew that she was, you know, 15 months into that month or 15 days into that month, which meant that even if she got a tenant, that tenant wasn't going to move in anytime soon, maybe 30, 45 days, right? That's typically how it works. So this lady's got two months at least minimum that she's going to be hemorrhaging. So Jamil just said, what would it look like if you sold it to me? Yeah. He ended up making $47,500 mm -hmm. on his first deal, walking a for rent by owner doing exactly what Jerry just said. And what's great about this, What's great about it, uh, then I want to hear your your thoughts on it, Brent, is a lot of times what they'll say is they'll say, well, what's your price? Because remember, these are investors and they may have owned that property forever. And you may put out a number that, that is a great number. And to them, they gladly sell it for that number because they're just, they would be done with it. They own it free and clear. They've owned it forever. Who knows what's going on? But it's not hard to have a high level conversation with a buy and hold investor who's got a vacant property they're trying to re-rent. It's very easy conversation. They're not going to be offended you're asking. They're, they're going to ask you, well, everything's for sale. You know, if the price is right, okay, well, tell me about the property and, you know, come to an offer. And then you're in the business, right? You're, you're talking to somebody, you're possibly making an offer on something. And it's more of the psychology of like picking up the phone, talking to somebody, making an offer that's going to start to give you confidence to now go do this more and more and better and better. And that's a free way. It's an easy way to instantly get on the phone and start making offers on properties. Yeah. Affordablehousing.com. It used to be go section eight.com. I have a, uh, I have a few students in Indianapolis and Memphis in Detroit and uh, somewhere in Washington. I don't remember the market, but they just call, they just call those. Um, it has, the owner of the property's number right on there and they call and um, one they'll, they'll hit them with the second question. I understand that you want to rent this, but do you have any other property mm -hmm. you would consider an offer on? And that's, that's the best tactic that that's yeah. where they find the most success. But second, they find cash buyers. Yeah. They find their cash buyers there that are looking in yeah. the area of uh, to buy more affordable housing. And it's a great way. If you want to like a local mentor that has, you know, some real estate, that's a nice way yeah. to meet somebody at least. Because Brian, if they say, if they say, no, I don't want to sell. No, I don't want to sell. Then you can say, well, you know, I come across a lot of properties. Are you looking to buy? There you go. Now, either way you're winning, right? They're either selling or they want to buy and you're having a good conversation. Or raise funds or whatever else. I mean, mm -hmm. it's just a good conversation with somebody that's got some experience in real estate that you probably normally wouldn't have had. And I'm telling you, you are one conversation away every single time you dial the phone of, of, opening a door you never thought could even be opened. Who knows? People want to give you money. People want to, you know, uh, take you under their wing. People want to sell you their property. They want to buy properties from you. They want to introduce you to their closing attorney or, or their tax guy or the gal or what, you know what I mean? Like, it's just, you meet really, really, really amazing people if you're active every single day. And, and if you do talk to property management, a company, you could say, Hey, do you have any, any clients that, are looking to sell any of their inventory or if you know of one of your one of your clients that's buying you know give me a call we're we're or selling buying you know like you can have the same conversation with property managers too um another thing about property management companies is um you can buy the property management company we're in the process of buying one right now we were talking to them about having them manage our properties here in arizona and we found out that they they needed help with operations and scaling and we said would you be open to us taking over half the property management company? Guys, there's so pick up the phone. TTP, baby. Talk That's to it. people. And don't be afraid of buying businesses. Yes. Aaron Beasley says, Hey, I have questions about how to stop foreclosure if the auction is tomorrow morning. My wife is one of the greatest in the industry at doing this. Go to her YouTube channel, Laura Morby. And she has a couple of YouTube videos on actually stopping a foreclosure, not stopping a foreclosure, but postponing a foreclosure. She's done it live and put it on the YouTube channel. If you are a sub two student, 
My wife has a whole entire mini course inside of sub two on exactly how to do it. The paperwork, the documentation, the steps, all that kind of stuff. Go into the sub two vault. You guys can see all of that kind of stuff. Um, okay. So we got a couple of ways that we've got, we can get a deal today. Any other things that I can do today to get a deal today? Brent, Jerry, how do I get a deal? Today? I mean, I, again, it comes down to budget, right? It comes down to the budget. You could buy these leads without a doubt. You can go, you can buy, if you go on some of these uh, paper lead uh, companies, you can buy the discount ones that nobody wanted to call um, or didn't think that was a lead for like $7 on the weekends or whatever. They have specials all the time on getting rid of some of these old leads. So I think that that's a, I, I think it's a great idea, Jerry. We've been, we've been uh, working with propertyleads.com. Uh, Kyle is uh, phenomenal there and he's, he's done a good job and we've got a couple deals that way. How the heck um, did Kyle get propertyleads.com? Like, did, was he born in 1970 and was like, how do you oh, get he that has, domain? If you saw his roster of website names, he literally he has no idea how to do SEO, right? All those all, all PPL leads are are SEO, right? And if you figure out SEO, you're a you're a game genius over. Yeah. and a millionaire, right? And yeah. so uh because that, that game is always changing. And so he found somebody that knew SEO and he had the website. Boom. Now he's got a company. <laughs> Freaking genius. genius. I love that. I love that company. Name. It's so good. Um, check this out. Heather Smith, unrelated to the topic, but I like this. She says, I know it's not real estate related. I just wanted to thank Pace for encouraging me not to give up. I just had an owner agree to seller financing his truck. I got two no's before this. Heather, you got 98 no's less than what it normally takes me to get a <laughs> yes. So congratulations on only yeah. two no's. Hopefully you meant to say 200 no's, not two. Oh my gosh. Yeah, but please, I think, I think, uh, you know, going back to your question of like, how do you get a deal today? Well, if, if you don't pick up the phone, then for sure you don't, if you pick up the phone, then you might like, I, I, I remember watching a Brent Daniels YouTube video where, and correct me if I say this wrong, Brent, but you said 221, was it 200, yep. 200, uh, conversations or is it two? Yeah. 200 conversations. You're going to find 10 sellers that are at some level of motivation, one of them is going to say yes to a low cash offer that you're going to wholesale for a profit. Yeah. Is that what it was? Yeah, so yeah. 200 conversations with people that that are on some sort of distress list. I mean, yeah. you can't call in the in the phone book and just call anybody up and be like, hey, <laughs> would you consider an offer? You know what I mean? It turns that will out work, but not 200. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. And so, and, and by the way, it's much different. That's if you make those calls too, yeah. right? This isn't yeah. if you have somebody that uh, is, you know, four five, six dollars an hour, which they work hard and they're doing the, doing, doing what they do, but um, nobody's going to sink their teeth into the deal and into a lead like you will. Once you hear somebody say yes on the phone with you for like the first time, or maybe, or how much will you give me? You're kind of like, oh my gosh. It's like a this yeah, could actually best work. first kiss you've ever had. Yeah. yeah. And I say it's similar with on market. I, I tell people and I give this challenge all the time and I've never had somebody actually do it where they didn't get a deal, which is make a hundred offers. So this is on market. So you, you, it's already for sale. So, you know, they want to sell. Talk to somebody, an agent in this case, talk to an agent and make an offer, even if it's half of the list price. If you do that a hundred times, so five times a day. 25 a week, hundred in a month, the, all the stars are going to align. It, it just takes a hundred times. And I don't know if it's on number 29 or 67, but in a hundred offers, the stars are going to align. You're going to have a motivated seller, an agent ready to go, and your offer is going to be accepted and you're going to get a deal that you can wholesale for 10 grand or whatever, but you just got to make the hundred offers. Mm -hmm. So if you can dumb it down and just be like, all I got to do is talk to five people a day or how many ever a day. And I do this a hundred times, I'm going to get a deal. All right, let's go. And then you, you, you kind of turn off the rejection part of your brain and you just go to work and you get a deal. Like we don't need to really overcomplicate this. In, in 2004, I got my real estate license and I joined uh, Windermere is a brokerage out of, uh, out of Seattle. And uh, there was fax machines back then. Right. Oh yeah. And so Mike Mahoney, Brian Mahoney, 
um, who Mike Mahoney's my best friend. We grew up together. His dad did well. And he's like, Hey, listen, let's flip some houses. We're like, yeah, this is great. He's like, you got to make offers for me and we'll, we'll, we'll start flipping some houses. And this is 2004, 2005 Phoenix. I mean, everywhere was going bananas, but here it was going real bananas. And so we're sending out all these faxes, right? We're faxing offers. There wasn't like a scanned email type. Shut of the no, fax no, no, no. up, bro. Are we, you serious? We, we were faxing offers? We had, we had offers? reams of paper doing exactly what Jerry was saying. We'd fax them all over. The, and we had an individual. You have to type in each number and then the fax goes out, blah, 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 blah. We got two deals. Yeah. On market blind, deal. On market deal. From faxing people. From faxing to we, we would go, okay, the, the properties are on the market 90 days. They're under 350,000. We're gonna send offers to all of them. <laughs> I have a I you guys will you guys will like this. I have a student. I, I did a, I have a it's it's on my YouTube video. His first 10 deals, this is how he did it. I this cracks me up. He this is what he does. He goes Zillow by owner. Yep. He doesn't even call. He texts an offer, and I and his offer formula was fifty percent of Zillow. Mm -hmm. That's all I did. He he took the Zillow number. He went fifty percent. He couldn't even he didn't even bother to call the for sale by owner Zillow for sale by owner. He just texted his offer and said, "Hey, I see you got this Zillow by owner. Here's my offer, cash." And that, that's how he did his first ten deals. Wow. And we make this so complicated, guys. Like, stop making this so complicated. If I had to do a challenge with me versus Jerry or me versus Jamil or me versus Brent, and I only had 10 hours to get a deal, I would go after expired listings, fresh, the fresh 40, the 40 houses that went expired today, I would call those people and make 40 offers today. You're getting a deal. You're getting a contract today. There's no possible way. If you do 50% of ARV or 50% of their, their offer and you use creative, you're either getting a cash deal or you're getting a creative deal. Uh -huh. that day. And like in Maricopa County, uh, expired listings, we get 30 to 50 a day, 30 yeah. to 50 a day. And the majority of the people that are calling them are agents trying to get listings. So for me, um, I think expired listings is an, another really great way to get a contract to day but again you're gonna have to make those calls yourself like brent is saying you have cancel to cancel listings to pace mm -hmm. people cancel all the time because of uh they're they're just they're sick of people coming to their house they don't like their agent they don't like what's going on they don't like the process they just cancel it but at some point they were like yeah i do want to sell this property but then they just cancel the listing. Now, some of them just put it on the market because they're bored and they want to see what people would offer on their house. And uh, But for the most part, um, when people put their home on the market, if they get a reasonable offer, they're going to sell it. Guys, go to what my YouTube do. channel. Last month, I did, a, I did an elephant challenge. Last month. So everybody that's asking about expired listings, go to my YouTube channel. Look up last month's elephant challenge. We did three days of expired listings. I show you how to find them. We call them live. We have leaders in our community that call them live, generated leads live, show you exactly how to do it. Go and watch that. It's free on YouTube. But I will tell you this, once you build up that bank account and their processes and you feel great and you, you know that you can respond to incoming leads and you've got the sales skills to be able to convert those leads into a signed agreement, there is nothing sweeter than PPC. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nothing. Ooh, that's Nothing. a good one. Roland just dropped a good one. He said, watch the ones that go pending that fall out. Yep. Put backup offers on pending listings. Mm. Yep. Yeah, I like that. Mm -hmm. I honestly that's never been a strategy I've ever done. So I am su I'm surprised we haven't done it. I would imagine it's kind of a niche deal. You're not gonna get a you can't get like a guaranteed deal today or maybe even this week, but it is definitely a strategy that's gotta work. Well, you said something really interesting, Pace, um, talking about the, the, the people that flip a lot of houses, like a lot of houses, they don't do the marketing themselves typically, right? What happens is, and this is even, th this is, this is all around the country, but the guys that are on TV, the guys that run the pay-per-click, the guys that are on radio ads, they're not flipping that house. Okay. For the most part, sometimes, sometimes you got the Brad Chandlers that, uh, you know, will, will do that. Um, but 
for the most part. It's uh, they're, they're selling to five or 10 private uh, investors. You'll never see them on a list. You'll never hear about them. They're never going to get snaked by somebody because it's, you know, been blasted out to thousands of people. Um, they just sell them privately to, to a few of the people um, that, uh, that, that do a bunch of those flips. And it's, it's, hand in glove with, with a lot of the marketing and then the, um, you know, the people that, that bring in the money. What the PPC same sites do you guys recommend? Well, so my, my thoughts on PPC are, uh, that's an animal to try to do on your own. And I, I highly recommend not doing it. In fact, most of the people that are really good at PPC aren't doing that. Uh, so there's agencies is what we call them. And now you're going to pay the agency fee Yep. And not all agencies are created equal. I've had great experiences with some and not with others. Uh, the there we go. The challenge I have with an agency is, uh, are they going to give me the attention I want or am I going to get outsourced to a rep and then that rep isn't so good? But an agency, they're going to have a lot of data and they're going to know uh, what's going on in the markets you're trying to market in. And they're going to be able to bid on those keywords at a much better rate than you probably will on your own. Yep. because they're they're buying in bulk right so so it's it can be much more affordable than you trying to do it on your own and there's a lot of nuance to ppc like the algorithms and all the things change constantly so i use brandon bateman quite a bit i don't know who you you're using brent but uh we use we use bateman collective and uh, we're pretty happy with them we have another service we we use as well but but they're pretty well known in the wholesaling industry so a lot of people use them yeah i've got um i got the best guy I, I mean, it's in house, and you got uh, it in house. Yeah, I've got it in house, and we we do it for some of the Rhino Tribe students around the country. Uh, if you have, if you've got, you know, depending on the size, if you're in a smaller budget, five grand. If you're in a larger market, uh, if you're in a smaller market, five grand. If you're in a larger market, ten grand to spend minimum each month for and, six months. Uh, for six months. For six months. And you and you want the best of the best. Um, DM me at realbrentdaniels.com. Uh, dot, dot, dot com. Uh, at real Brent Daniels. Tells you how many times I use my. Instagram. Why would you bring it in house, Brent? Just out of curiosity. Well, I was working. Um, so Matt, you know Hill here, who runs the studios, best friend with Jesse. Jesse was running. Worked for Google. He was running oh, all hmm. these huge Google accounts, right? Not only that, but Jesse used to work for Keegley as a dispo manager. Okay. So he was doing that in the former life, got all the training and all the stuff he needed to do to run Google, went and ran huge Google accounts, was able to look at everybody's Google account to see what worked the best. And uh, the, the return is bananas. It's absolutely bananas. We did you, a, we did you brought in a, you brought in a, a real expert and, and basically hired yeah. and brought it in house. Most people though aren't gonna aren't gonna want to do that. I've got your expert if you need it, Jerry. Yeah, well, that's what I mean. Like, what go to go to Brent, go to Brent Sky, or you know, go to Rhino, for most Rhino people Leeds. in the beginning. I think we got RhinoLeads.com. RhinoLeads.com is where we're gonna start. Well, we're gonna start growing that. Rhinos, why wouldn't you call it HornyLeads.com? Huh? <laughs> Since it's those are wrong leads. You, you gotta totally call it HornyLeads.com. That's his other business. That's my other business. <laughs> No, but Wrong I'm telling leads. you, you get to that yeah. point. All roads, and you know it, Jerry. All roads lead to pay-per-click. Long-term yeah. strategy. Um, it's just now a couple. Here's a couple of things with PPC, and we've learned this firsthand. If you're not set up right, you'll just waste money. And when I say set up right, I mean when that form lead comes in, you ha you literally have 30 seconds to be calling that seller, because the way those work is they're very high intent, high motivation. They're they're inbounding you, and you're not the only one. So they're filling out five forms right now. Yep. And first, first one to that person typically gets it. Your goal is the one call close. Like you're not waiting. If you wait, you lost it. five minutes, and your your fall off rates like fifty percent. Done. Yeah, yeah, you're gonna miss out on it. So, a live answer or a call a web yeah. phone in thirty seconds. Um, you're done. Forget it. Not only yeah. that, but once you get them on the phone, you have to have the sales skills because if you don't, right. the companies are gonna beat you like a drum. Yeah, if you've got like a if you've got like a cold calling acquisition person and you put them on PPC leads. They're going to screw it up because they're used to a long sales cycle with lots of follow up, and like you don't, you're not trying to, you're not trying to discover pillars of motivation on a PPC lead, right? Like you're skipping all of that because you don't need to. By nature of it being PPC, they're very highly motivated. 
you're you're moving right to a close with those leads. Yep. And those are deep. Like those are your big buys. I entered a PPC lead while my wife was giving birth in 2018. That's how important those leads are. <laughs> you have oh, to. Yeah. yeah. It's way too much money to not be ready for that. And so it's that like you got to be you got a very very fast response time and um, you got to have a long runway. Like if you can't spend minimum 5000, I think that's the minimum 5000 and you better have a 6 month runway. Okay, so you, so don't even think about PPC unless you got 30 grand set aside to do it right because that's what it takes to to really dial that in. Yeah, we um when I first started in 2013 14, we were primarily doing direct mail billboards. I was a home investor, the We Buy Ugly Houses people. And dude, we were getting schooled by people with PPC here locally in Phoenix. This was 10 years ago. And Home investors could not figure it out. They were like, why are mm -hmm. we getting our butts kicked? Why are we getting our butts kicked? It was PPC. People were transitioning to PPC and figuring out the online game. Mm -hmm. And the last year I was at Home investors, we were spending, at the first, first year I was with Home investors, I was spending 20 grand a month. My last year with Home investors, we were spending 20 grand a month as well, but they had converted 80% of their spend off of direct mail and put it all on PPC and Facebook ads and things of that, that nature. So they've converted almost entirely to digital. Again, it's impossible to scale other business models. And if you guys go direct yep. mail, I think direct mail is a great, you know, it's very similar. It's inbound lead, high intent. These people saw your postcard, decided to pull out their phone, call you. That's a, that's a way intentional seller. The problem is it really doesn't work in most markets anymore right? People are the ha people's habits are changing. It's incredibly expensive. It's very um, intense. And also the life cycle of a direct mail campaign is like three to four months. They've got to see your direct mail three or four times before they know you're serious or they recognize you enough to call you. And so that's another thing that is really hard to get into and get a deal today. Yeah. I love this question by Carson. What's a good bridge method in between hmm. cold calling yourself and PPC? Um, I think paper lead is a great way to cut your teeth on that pa paper well, lead. go ahead Derek. and and first of all when you say cold calling yourself you should even if you're cold calling yourself right now you need to immediately stop doing that because you can get vas to do that for you and all you're looking for is a hand raise like yes i want to sell okay great now you pass that off to acquisitions and if you're acquisitions that's you but now you're not doing the low dollar an hour and you can get good cold callers for 10, 12 bucks or, you know, Pace has, has their company has them. Um, and, and, and that's, you're worth more than 10 or $12 an hour. Do not be cold calling. If you have a, if you have budget whatsoever, first thing I would do is I'd hire VAs to do the cold calling for you. And now you're only talking to the warm leads that the cold callers generate. That's probably step one. Can I, your can transition. I give a caveat there? Yeah. I would highly suggest everybody talk to a thousand property owners yourself before sure. you hire anybody. Right? I agree. What's going to happen when they get on the phone with some of those leads, Jerry? Yeah, you better be a closer for sure. I mean, I, yeah, you, I, I think it's just yeah, you, know, you got to be a closer. If you, can, if you can get enough reps in to where you feel comfortable just not even thinking about it, just picking up the phone and having a conversation and know that you're looking about for the condition, timeline, motivation, and price of that property owner. Um, that's a skill and it's a skill that you're going to need because you'll just waste your money if you try to hire people that give you leads and then you're fumbling and stumbling and bumbling the whole way. So, But as a, but as a business model, as you scale, that's a quick transition is yeah. just you stop cold calling. Yeah. Yeah. When you're ready, but you're right. You're right, Brent. About a year ago, her name is Chava. She's awesome. She came into me. She's like, I just want leads. I'm like, okay, are you ready to close deals? She goes, I just want to solve my lead problem. <laughs> I go, okay. I'm going to tell you, here's what's going to happen. You're going to get overwhelmed with leads. And, and people who have never generated a lead before don't know the feeling of the anxiety of leads coming in. And like coming in 15 minutes later and then another one three hours later and another one the next morning and going, oh my gosh, I didn't even handle the leads from yesterday properly. Oh my gosh. You get one VA, two VAs. Here's what happens. The average VA that's good is going to generate two to three leads a day. Warm leads, right? They're not going to be hot, like ready to close, but they're going to be warm. People have raised their hand like Brent said. Dude, that is an, here's what happened. She did not believe me. And I go, go hire a VA. Here's where you go hire them. She hires them. 30 days later, she comes into a Zoom. She's like, I don't know what to do. I go, let me guess. You've got 
50 <laughs> leads that you haven't even been able to call yet. She's like, I went from not even knowing what it feels like to have a lead to now I'm bleeding leads. Like everywhere I have leads everywhere. And she's like, what's my next step? And I go, now you got to go either a miraculously become a closer overnight or B go partner <laughs> with somebody who is already a proven closer. And it was so stressful for her. She was like, I'm just going to shut off the VA. And she just didn't work that muscle. She wasn't ready to close. Yeah. So really, really good um, thing to point out is that if you're going to generate that kind of lead, that like amount of leads, you better be freaking ready to close because it's expensive. Those leads are freaking expensive. Yeah. Most people think they have a lead problem and they have a conversion problem. Yep. They got all the, they got all the leads in the world right under their nose. And everybody likes to blame the lead. Like that's the first thing we all blame, right? Is the leads. Your sales guy is going to blame the leads. It's like, oh, the leads are crap. And most of the time it's not. You got you have a conversion problem, not a lead problem. Yeah, there you go. So, um, yeah, we do have, and here, here's what's going to happen with cold callers too. So Josiah, Brent just brought Josiah up a couple um, minutes ago. Josiah and I are business partners in four businesses. One of the businesses that we just started about five months ago, and we're about to uh, unveil it probably in about another month, is true AI cold calling. It's true AI. Like the AI will adapt its tone. It will adapt its words. It will adapt based on understanding the religion of the other person, based on their geography and the words they say. It will adapt so incredibly well. And not only that, but it will also follow up at perfect times and it will bring up conversations in the first conversation in the follow-up conversation to the point. Okay. This is what happened during the Super Bowl when we were testing the AI called a week before the Super Bowl. We had a lady is like, Oh, well, you know, we're busy. We got people coming in town. Da, da, da. The AI is like, Oh, what are you guys doing? What's the family doing? Like truly having a conversation. This is not just like check the box, move to this conversation. It's truly having a conversation at this point. And <clears throat> the lady says, we're going to watch the Super Bowl. Oh, who are you rooting for? Perfect. The AI marks it down in the, in the CRM to follow up about the Super Bowl. The AI goes in. Obviously, we've trained it to do this. It goes in and it takes the score from the Super Bowl and three or four of the highlights for the team she was rooting for, calls up the lady and says, oh, my gosh, didn't you love that field goal? Didn't you do this? Oh, my gosh, it's amazing. <laughs> Guys, AI is not just coming. It is freaking here, okay? And what's going to happen is the cost to cold call a seller is going to go down dramatically, but it does not stop the need for somebody to close that freaking deal and build a long-term relationship with these sellers. You still have to convert. I can't see AI being in a position where it can actually close a seller probably for another two, maybe even three years, but that's coming too. That is going to happen. It will get so freaking good that uh, and I'm watching we're watching it right now we're spending a good amount of money every single month developing this thing we've got amazing developers it is scary but still even with these leads and they set the appointment they put them on your calendar it's half the cost of a virtual assistant you still have to close you still mm -hmm. have to convert you still have to get those contracts and get that seller to to sign on the dotted line send the docu sign do all of those types of things uh creative culture says plot twist april fools no it ain't no a, a, um a thing at all it's not a freaking april fool's joke it is legit <laughs> it's scary yeah but i th i think that going back to that question i think that's the right question like we're always asking okay where am i at today what are my marketing budgets do i have systems do i have processes am i a closer am i ready for this am i ready for ppc and uh, a lot of times we think there's some kind of like magic formula or there's the holy grail. And, and most of the time it's just starting where you're at, developing out, going deep on something, getting pretty good at that, and then moving on to the next thing. And I like to look at it like typically for me, what, what I find is the highest intent are usually the most expensive. And if I'm willing to invest in very high intent leads, then I'm going to get I'm going to, I'm going to get deep deals and I'm going to get great deals. I'm going to make a lot of money. So it's, but again, where are you at and how soon can you get there? Yeah. One out of 10 leads right now from pay-per-click we're closing. Mm -hmm. uh, I mm -hmm. would say three out of those uh, sell um, to, to somebody. The other ones, you know, are just kind of maybe a little bit of spam. Maybe they're just listed and they're just trying to get a cash offer, that type of thing. Um, mm -hmm. But you, Is this you need PPC or PPL? 
PPC. PPC. Yeah, PPC. What's your so, cost per what's your cost per contract? Do you know on that one? Well, we did it's about three grand. I oh, mean, we so did good. we we spent yeah, thirty-five uh grand. So it, it ebbs and flows, but it's fair it's fairly quick. It's a 45 day si- cycle, mm-hmm. right? The first day that we get it to the day that we get paid is 45 days. And um we spent about 35, not not about we spend 35 grand a month and um, this year's just been bananas. I mean, it's been uh-huh. between eight deals and a, this last month was 11 deals. And, uh, we had our best month ever as a, as a, uh, a business at 402,000 in March, which was bananas with, with you Amazing. Know, five people. So Holy it, crap. Uh, are you, have you guys primarily turned off cold calling? What's that? Are you still cold calling? We're very, very, very specific with our cold call lists. What we'll call the um, the the um, AI lists, right? The the lists that all the algorithms come in and they look at what are all the properties that sell for cash off the market. What are all those, and what are the characteristics and demographics of those property owners that own those properties? And then they smush them together. So we're staying laser focused on that, and and that. and inherited and probate and driving for dollars and you know all the specific ones. Um, here's a good question. I'm going to guess how to say her name. Bear with me. Shal- Shalitha Ye. Shalitha Ye. What do you think? Was that good? Did I do a good job, Jerry? <laughs> that I, sounds I right you're... to me. <laughs> okay. All right. Cool. Um, what name. about the proof of funds? Is it legal to use this from other people? We're currently using Jerry Norton's program. We're just making sure we are doing everything correctly. I can tell you mm-hmm. that everybody I know that uses Jerry Norton's program is doing it legit getting proof of funds, doing all the things. Your program provides proof of funds letter, correct, Jerry? Yeah, and it's custom. So it's got the address, your your entity, the dollar amount of your offer. Uh, but you got to understand too, proof of funds is subjective because there's, there's really two different types of proof of funds. One is a hard proof of funds or a soft proof of funds. Hard proof of funds is usually liquid, meaning uh, a, a, bank, a bank statement, you know, a checking account, 30 days old showing cash liquid. And then there's a soft proof of funds, which is like a pre-approval letter or a, like what we do, what we offer. It's 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 not fully underwritten. Like, hey, the money's sitting here waiting for you. It's more like, hey, the money's available. If if you qualify, if this deal qualifies, you've got backing behind you. So what I found is is a soft proof of funds is generally accepted by most agents. And again, proof of funds is really only an issue with on market. Most sellers don't know to ask for a proof of funds, so it doesn't really come up. With our market, it comes up every single time. So about 90% of the time, an agent's going to be okay with a soft proof of funds, like what we provide. Um, about 10% of the time, they're going to want a hard proof of funds, which could put you in a dilemma. Like, do you do you have that? So there's ways around that. There's ways that we work around that. One way that we do it with agents is we'll say, look, um, I can't get a hard proof of funds unless I have a contract. And you don't want to sign a contract unless I give you a proof of funds. So we're kind of we're stuck here, the chicken before the egg. Give me a contingency. Give me five days. Let's execute a contract. Once I have a contract, now I can go to my investors and I can get you a proof of funds because they'll underwrite this deal for me. And I can give you either a full approval from my lender, or I can go to my partners and my investors, but they're not going to want to look at this deal if I don't have a contract. Yeah. So give me the contract, give me a few days contingency and I'll, I'll be able to provide you. And if I can't provide it, then we can terminate the contract. And I love that, that Jerry. That it's tends to work like, pretty well. It's almost like you're a flipping genius or something. Almost. <laughs> Gosh, dude. Um, almost. The, the Adventures of Keithius says, what's up with y'all about wholesaling laws changing? I just briefly Ooh. caught that last week. I would go back mm-hmm. two, maybe three weeks and go watch that episode. It is amazing. Here's another question that I really like. I for Before I was the creative finance guy, back in 2013, 14, I was known as the mobile home guy. Hmm. Um, I didn't I was, know that. Oh yeah. I was the mobile home guy and the assisted living guy for like a good, what was funny is I was doing all creative finance on them, but everybody saw the deals I was doing. Mobile homes where land is not owned are not mobile homes. My friend, they are called vehicles. Okay. <laughs> they, they are not home. They title. are not recognized as real estate. Okay. So the way that we make money on these, Eric Thompson says, can we, can anything be done with a mobile home where the land is not owned? The mobile home is in a mobile home community. So most, if not almost all I've ever seen, the mobile home community has first right of refusal to buy that mobile home 
before it ever leaves their park. So I would go and check that out. 99.9%. I don't think I've ever seen any mobile home park that is not willing, does, does not have a first right of refusal on every single mobile home in their park. So that's one. Two, if they decide they don't want the thing, typically who you're selling those things to, you're going to, dude, it costs 10 grand to move those suckers. Yeah. And most of those things you're going to buy for 500, a thousand bucks. The person buying it from you is going to buy it for a thousand to 2000 bucks from you. So you're going to make small chunks of money. Okay. You can flip them. You can clean them up and then sell them in the park. That's what Scott Garcia, a lot of people that know Scott Garcia, that was actually his first deal he ever did. Wow, sitting right here. I think Scott, what'd you make on that deal? Like 20 grand? He just went to the bathroom. Oh, yeah. Literally I think, just went I, to the I bathroom. went to his first mobile home flip and I go, bro, you are ballsy doing a flip on a, on something that's not even a house. I love it. This was probably seven years ago or so. Scott Garcia, who's you know taking a leak over at Brent's studio right now. Hopefully. He made 21 <laughs> grand just keeping it in the park. So flip, you could flip it inside the park. You could sell it to somebody outside the park. Who's buying that deal is another mobile home park owner like me. I've got seven spots in my Yuma property right now. And I don't care which one fills the spot. Either A, a tenant brings their own mobile home, happens a lot, or I'll buy one and rent it out. So those types of things, the problem is they cost so much money to move, to, you know, lift up, move on a truck, you know, oversized vehicle, do all the things. You got to get permits. You got the sheriff departments involved. They come in, they drop the thing down. You got to hook it all up. It's 10 grand minimum. And most of those things are made out of absolute trash. Yeah. So I would either stay away from them. Or, and it's not a scalable model. That's the other thing too. If you're trying to build, build a business model, the, Jerry, Brent, do you guys know anybody that's scaled a non-actual real estate mobile home business? No. Mm, I don't know anybody. Okay. So it, do, it yeah. does, you can get the deals done. This is what we would do. A lot of times we would find properties where the mobile home was not affixed to the land. And my wife, Laura, she was the one actually doing the tie downs. We would take houses we bought for $30,000 from homeowners because they didn't understand that the reason it wasn't a home is because it wasn't anchored into the ground. And so we would buy it and the dirt that it sat on and we would anchor it into the ground and make like eighty, ninety thousand $90,000 by spending 3000 bucks. So we did that a lot. And Jerry, are you at Shields right now? Yes. <laughs> I'm sitting outside. This is the guy, you know how they got, they got the cowboy guy or whatever it is. It's me and him chilling. You're right, Sam. Shills is where Montanians get their groceries, just FYI. <laughs> That's right. Um, Yusuf, I think that it just depends on where you're at, but I would shoot for five grand a month in yeah. pay per click. It's just you don't build up enough momentum in your account. You know, Google wants to take as much as possible. And so um, they're going to push up the bigger budgets, just depending. If you're in a bigger market, you're going to be buried. Don't even waste your time. Uh, if you're in a smaller market, I'd say less than 100,000 people, you could certainly test it. But if you're, um, if, if you can get to 5,000, sell some stuff off. You know what I mean? Like get it and, and, and don't just go, okay, well, 3,000 a month. No, no, no. Have it set aside have it at least 90 days set aside, preferably six months set aside so that you can really season your account and really get it. But I'm telling you, once you get past that barrier to entry there, oh my gosh, the, the, the leads and the deals are phenomenal. And my acquisition teams used to like calls and texts and, and, uh, and direct mail on some level. And they're like, they, they, close these so far they love this i mean they're addicted mm -hmm. to these leads i mean it's almost like they they went through the fires and now they're just like you know in paradise so to speak so they're, they're having a great time with these leads um can i can i be can i promote something real quick before we wrap up in the next 15 minutes yep i've got something guy, guys coming up on saturday i would love everybody to participate in it it's called a million acts of kindness i'm doing it with charlie rocket who is a hero mm -hmm. of mine charlie rocket was the producer for Two Chains. I know that's uh, Jerry Norton's favorite rap artist out of Atlanta. <laughs> I, can't e I can't even imagine having Jerry Come listen on. to Come on, he's Chains. an Outkast fan. You know that. He is an Outkast fan, I'm sure of it. Um, so Charlie Rocket, big mu mu uh, music producer, Grammy Award winner, became a Ni Nike athlete, uh, got a brain tumor, changed his whole entire life around. And he 
now travels the country and makes people's lives and their wishes come true. You guys ever see the fad where people would go through Starbucks and like buy the people's drink behind them? Yeah. He's the guy that invented that. And he called that winning the winning streak. And so he's always doing really cool, fun activities. So on Saturday, okay, go to my Instagram stories. I have the link for it. On Saturday, what we're doing is trying to create 1 million acts of kindness for free. This is just a big real estate industry event that we're trying to do on Saturday. I will be in Atlanta, Georgia doing it with Jamil. Charlie will be in LA and a lot of our community will be all over the country hanging out. So million acts of kindness. What does that mean? It means handing a flower to a stranger, opening a door for a stranger, helping somebody cross the street, grabbing a sandwich for a homeless person, doing like anything you possibly can, just a million acts of kindness. Some people are going to be mowing lawns and neighborhoods and all that kind of stuff. So that is going to be Saturday, 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Western time. Go to, um, uh, I think the website is millionactsofkindness.com. And all you do, literally costs no money. There's nothing to sell, none of that kind of stuff. All we're doing is we're just hanging out with each other. I'll have three or 400 people in Atlanta doing this with me. We'll go, I'll do five acts of kindness each. We'll do 2,000 acts of kindness as a group. Angie Milanazzo is doing it. She says, come to my office in Thornton, Colorado. Reach out to me. I'll give you free water, Charlie's coconut water, and more. Uh, the CEO, Charlie Rocket, I'm on a winning streak. White dude was, yeah, he was. He was really heavy. He got really skinny fast, runs like crazy. I forgot about him. Homeboy has been my hero for five years. He dropped everything he was doing, got an RV, and raised money from like Oprah, Steve Harvey, and a bunch of really cool people, and just started making people's dreams come true. And in the last couple of months, I've become really good friends. He stayed in my guest house where Jerry used to have his masterminds. <laughs> okay. A lot of ma magic has happened in that guest house. And so Saturday, guys, millionactsofkindness.com. Go to my Instagram stories for the link. Would love to collaborate and just do some fun stuff with you guys. Saturday, millionactsofkindness.com. Thanks. Awesome. Yeah, why is it why is it Eastern Standard Time and Pacific? Why isn't it Western Standard Time? I, I like. I always, I always say it's Western. Western Time yes. makes me feel like the guy that uh, is behind Jerry Norton right now, just looking out with his cowboy hat. <laughs> that is great. Awesome, Jerry. What do you got cooking this week? Uh, we're pretty excited. We're doing a uh, subscription launch for PropWire, where you Ooh, know I just yeah. like losing. I, Hold on, I just like losing Prop money. Yeah. There, there's the question for you, Jerry. I don't know what the data, other one data is, cr but data cruncher. Uh, definitely. I mean, if you're so data cruncher is just an on market tool that scrapes for dis, for uh, distressed properties, and then it just gives you a list. So oh. it just saves a ton of time. That's a, a cool free software we developed. It's called. It's actually called Data Cruncher, um, but you guys can get that for free. That's a cool thing. But but PropWire is our big uh, our big data provider, and it's free, right? To search and download as much data as you want. And what we're doing now is we're we're giving away three hundred dollars of skip tracing for ninety seven dollars a month. Awesome. So so you pay ninety seven dollars a month, you can get two hundred. You're going to get twenty five hundred free skip traces, and uh, and again, you only. It only counts if it if it's a hit. So if it if it doesn't get you a number, then it doesn't count. Um, and again, we're just growing that we're growing that platform. We've got I think 120,000 users now in less than a year. So pretty excited. That's a that's a big thing we're doing right now. You're out of your mind. Wire? Hats off to you for doing a free software, man. Industry changing, dope, superhuman. Thank you. Yeah, it's, it's called if you go to propwiregold.com, you can see that offer that we're doing right now. And it's doing really well because, again, if you're if you're at all Forward wanting phone pace, numbers, if you guys want, if Jerry will pay you money you to get it if you use forward slash pace. Yeah, Jerry is paying everybody money. Jerry, Jerry is that? paying everybody money to give PropWire out for free. People don't realize yeah. this. But uh, he loves this industry so much, and he wants to make sure that people don't have any barriers to entry. They don't have any budget concerns. You literally put this out. I mean, you've got – you've charged for other things. This one you yeah. put out to the whole world for free. 120,000 people are taking advantage of it. Plus, you can get $300 worth of skip traces for 90 cents. How many, how many skip traces is that a month? 2,500 you get. 2,500. Yeah. Good so if the, going rate, 
if the going rate's 12 cents, that's 300 bucks for 97. I mean, like, why would you not? Do, if you're skip tracing, why would you not do it? It's kind of a no-brainer. Why, why did you even do it, Jerry? Why even come out with prop wire and not make it, not not do the um, dollar thing? I mean, it, it's not totally because I'm a nice guy. I mean, that's probably, that's that's actually not really why. Um, what I, the, the, <laughs> the end game is I have uh, millions of users because on, on any platform, the value is in the user base, not necessarily the subscription, right? Like, I mean, Instagram sold for billions of dollars and it had no money at all, but it had users. So it's sort of that idea. I just want to create a software that everybody uses and, and wants to use. And it'll monetize in time as it grows and grows and grows. Because when you have a million users on a platform, you can offer that platform anything. And so, you know, we are monetizing. We have some skip tracing that you can do and other things. But I'm willing to lose money month, month after month again and again uh, as long as I'm growing the platform. So as long as I can keep losing money to grow it, I'm, I'm going to keep doing it. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, Brent, what do you have work. coming on this week, bro? I'm going to Disneyland. Liar. You yeah. didn't make enough money this month. You only made 400 grand. How when, are you going to afford Wednesday, to go to Disneyland? Wednesday, it's spring break for uh, for Bo's school, so we're taking uh, Bo to Aaron's favorite place on the planet. She walks through, and she starts weeping a little bit, of weeping with joy <laughs> of, her, of her childhood memories and sharing it with... Uh, with our children. So, uh, yeah, we're going to have a great time. We're going to go Wednesday through Saturday. And then, uh, the week after that, I'm going to the masters. I'm going to the uh, masters too, bro. I know I'll see you there. It'll Are you going to be, be there uh, Tuesday? No, I'm, I'm uh, Thursday through Saturday, Sunday. Oh yeah. We're only going Tuesday. We got a three month old, so we don't want to yeah. like have a crying baby at the masters. <laughs> but then the week after that, I'm doing a four hour live show on Wednesday from 10 to two. It's going to be absolutely bananas on the Brent Daniels YouTube channel. I love it. Right. Um, I do have an announcement. I think Jerry has confirmed, but I'm not quite sure. Jerry will have to tell me on the show. Shannon Ashford sub two. She says is squad up sold out. It almost is. We're about a month away from squad up summit. Usually events don't sell out for like up until the week before, two weeks before, but we are almost sold out. Squadupsummit.com. We've got freaking Cody Sanchez speaking. We've got Donald Miller, one of my heroes. We've got Grant Great, Cardone man. is coming. Um, I think Tanisha Spencer, Tanisha Epps, she's actually in the comments. I think we're going to be having her introduce Cody Sanchez just because Tanisha Spencer is one of my heroes. And then we have my number one hero of all time is going to be speaking officially committed. I believe Jerry freaking Norton is coming to squad up. Some are you bringing Anne Marie? Yeah. We're going to go make a little thing out of it. A little trip out of it. Like a baby. You're going to make a baby out of it. No, like, no, I'm not going to make a baby out of it. No, but we're going <laughs> to, we're going to make a trip out of it. Yeah. So she'll come with me. And we'll hang out for the week. I love it. But yeah, I'm we're excited. excited. Yeah. Thank you. Is Anne Marie Thanks excited or is she like sick of travel? No, she's excited. We've been, it was funny because when you asked me, we were like, we need to do a trip. We need to do a trip. Where are we going to do a trip? And uh, so we just, that worked out perfect. I love it. Squad Up Summit, guys. Go to squadupsummit.com. I think we have like two, 2,100 people coming. We got like the fire department will only allow us to have like 2,100 and something. And I think we're at like almost 2,000 tickets sold. So go to Squad Up Summit. Dot com. We are almost sold out. What are the dates? Sep uh, ooh, uh, April 23rd, 24th, and 25th. A three-day event in Orlando, Florida. Once you guys buy the ticket, you get accepted into a Facebook group with everybody else that's going to Squad Up Summit. So you can share hotel rooms. A lot of people are like literally squatting up and doing deals already in that Facebook group, which is kind of fun to watch. They are sharing money, uh, sharing hotel rooms and saving money by just you know, squatting up and getting into the same hotel room. Um, stay at the hotel, by the way. When you stay at the hotel, that's where all the cool networking happens. I see a lot mm -hmm. of people go, oh, I'm going to get an Airbnb. You stay off property, you miss all the late night conversations in the hallways and you go to the restaurants. Like that's where all the great stuff happens. Brent and I are in a mastermind together that we go to. And it's like in that little restaurant in that, I think it's the Grand Hyatt or something right by the yeah. hotel in Tampa. Yep. Yeah. It's not even the event. It's what happens in the hallway, right? Oh. And you come home going, dude, I made a million dollars just with people in the freaking hallway doing deals and talking about, you know, building our business. So squadupsummit.com, 
a couple hundred tickets left out of 2000. So we're like 90% there. Exciting that we've still got a month for that event. Um, if you want to come and meet Jerry, Jerry's going to be in the hallway all three days signing autographs um, with me probably. And uh, I think Grant Cardone should introduce Jerry as the greatest real estate investor of all time. Uh, I think I thought, I, I thought you, I thought I was going to warm the room for him. You told me I was going to, I think he should warm the he room for you. Bro. <laughs> he should definitely, he should definitely open for you. Not the other way around. Um, oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> look, bro, you want, if you ask me to trade my life for yours or for um, Grant Cardone, I'm trading my life for yours. If I had be to. careful, Casey's probably watching right now. I'd be careful what you say. He watches a lot of my stuff. He made a comment on something <laughs> I was saying to him the other day. He said, he goes, uh, Pace, you're always talking crap. Cause I always tell people, look, I know Grant says to start in multifamily, but Grant did not start in multifamily. He started in single family. <laughs> the best thing to do is start in single family. And Grant's like, yeah, but who bought dinner last time we hung out? I'm like, of course, you got to pull that up. You got to say that. <laughs> so guys, squatupsummit.com. Looking forward to seeing everybody there. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. We are, there's, it's going to be kind of like a high school reunion. A lot of people have been connecting with each other the last three or four years of our community's launch. You will have a book called a yearbook. It will be the first inaugural squat up <laughs> event. So you'll have a yearbook where you can get everybody to sign. It's going to be epic. We'll, we'll have the, an avatar book where everybody that you meet, private money lenders, gators, sub two students, TTPers, Astro, the lizards, the iguanas, right? All the flipping geniuses. You'll be able to get everybody to autograph your yearbook. And it's going to be one of those things you look back on in 10 years and go, that was one of the greatest events I ever went to. And I met some of my very, very, very best friends. So um, squatupsummit.com. Looking forward to hanging out with you guys. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Great show, guys. Absolutely great show. Um, I think that's it. Are you good, Pace? You good, Jerry? I'm good. Yeah. Let Appreciate Jerry get you guys. out and uh, do his, uh, I don't know, what are you doing? Are you grocery shopping? What are you doing? No, they're the Emery and the kids are shopping or they went to Cracker Barrel. I don't know where they are. I'll find them. <laughs> Guys, uh, some people asked where Jamil was tonight. Jamil is traveling. He's been spending a lot more time in Canada with his daughter. His daughter's getting to an age where she's like, I want my dad hanging out with me and doing fun things. And so Jerry's uh, Jamil is traveling today, and he asked us to kind of cover for him, and he'll be back here next week. Really looking forward to hanging out with you guys tonight. Get creative. I do get creative right after Wholesale Hotline in 30 minutes. And I've actually got a newer person that I'm interviewing and I'm talking about her starting point. One of the things I've been doing in Get Creative on my podcast Monday nights at seven is interviewing and talking to one person and dissecting their individual business for an hour so that you guys can learn through that individual. So I'll see you guys on Get Creative. And thank you guys for coming to Wholesale Hotline, episode 213. See you next week. Or just say squat up. So squat up and enjoy the show. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. One, two, three. One, two, so three. squat up and enjoy the show. <laughs> what are you doing? I didn't say that thing. What? <laughs> I don't know. I okay. So, so squat, squat up and enjoy the show. Cool. <laughs> I think we should use the one where Jamil doesn't say anything. <laughs>